All right, you're gonna learn in this video how to set up a website. It's actually not too difficult and it's great to just have that place. You can just put up anything on your domain name. It's very, I don't know, liberating. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up an, a website with an Nginx server. We're gonna have CertBot to do our HTTPS, all very easy. Uh, and in fact, I'm even gonna show you the password to my server and you still will not be able to get into it. Oh, that's, that's a flex. How do you do that? Let's find out. Um, okay, so anyway, uh, you need two things to have a website. One is a domain name, and one is a place to host your website. So here I have a, all my domain names here. I actually, we're gonna be using this one here, uniboomer.com. So I'm gonna open up the DNS records. Now, if you want a domain name, I highly, highly recommend Epic. Um, uh, there's a link to them below. Basically, uh, you can get like an XYZ domain for like, uh, I don't know, like if the fee is like 850 or something a year. Actually, I think the introductory rate is something like six cents a year. So at least get one to, to play around with it. But anyway, I have uh, this domain name I'm not doing anything with. So that's one thing you need, the domain name. You also need somewhere to host your website. Um, so I'm on Vulture here. Actually, there's a link below too. I think if you click my link to them, you get like a hundred dollar credit for your first month to play around, which is more than you can ever need because it's actually extremely cheap. Um, but let's, I'm gonna go ahead and deploy a server here. Um, so this is gonna be the server our website's on. And of course, in addition to a website, we could you know, have email, we could have, uh, uh, I don't know, whatever kind of servers you want, uh, host your files. I'm just gonna click whatever here. I'm gonna say, let's say we want it in uh, New York. Um, for the operating system type, I'm gonna be using Debian. Uh, the instructions I give here will be pretty much for Debian or Ubuntu. There might be minor differences, uh, but I'm gonna pick Debian. That's the traditional choice for hosting. Uh, if you wanna be really cool, you can use OpenBSD or something, but I can't give you the directions for that because I haven't done it. Um, and for the server size, you do not need anything big. Don't You don't need to spend all this money uh, just to get the cheap one. I've gotten along fine hosting all my websites on the cheap uh, one. So I recommend the cheapest one that is not IP, IPv6 only. They do have this IPv6 only option. That might be a little hard to have a real website with. Um, uh, but if you don't know what, IPv6, IPv4 is, it doesn't really matter, but uh, I will say you should IP enable IPv6. We'll actually set that up uh, just to have it. It's good to have, but, uh, uh, and notice they also have DDoS protection and stuff like that, but I've never gotten that. So down here it says, what do you want your server to be named? Your host name, I'm just gonna call it cabin. It's gonna be the Uniboomers cabin, and I'm gonna deploy this server right now. Okay, so that's gonna take a minute or so to um, update or all that, or get everything configured. In the meantime, let's talk about how you want to log into your server. Okay, so um, you might think that you gotta know your username and password. Nah, I don't know my username and password. What you really need, the real secure way to um, have a server is to get an SSH key pair and uh, log in with that instead of a password, okay? So SSH, uh, you know, let's say I wanna log into my personal website. Well, I can just run SSH and then log in like that, okay? Um, so what you're gonna wanna do is SSH keygen. And that, if you haven't done this before, if you've already used SSH, you probably already have a, a key pair. But if you have not, run this command and it will generate a key pair for you. And basically you're gonna identify your computer with a key and you're, we are gonna tell your server, allow this computer to log on, uh, you know, if you have this, the proper key to log on. And it's better to use that, and well, we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna disable logging on via passwords so people can't hack your thing. It's basically the best you can do. All right, so um, so it looks like this is now pretty much done. We have an IP address, I'm gonna click on this. Actually, it says it's still installing. It'll probably take a little bit of time. But in the meantime, um, I'm gonna copy this IP address and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our uh, registrar, which in our case is Epic, if you're using it, and uh, go to your DNS records area. And what we're gonna wanna do is once we have that IP address, well, Epic, of course, has your domain name, and it probably has, uh, if you go to NS records, it should probably have some settings. They should be filled in by default, but um, they have your domain name. So we now need to tell Epic, okay, when this domain name, when someone goes to this domain name, you need to look to this server, you know, in my case, 45, 32, 6, 1, 12, okay? So I'm gonna go into uh, the A records area. I'm gonna add in a record. And it's gonna look like this. I'm not gonna have anything here. It's just gonna be uniboomer.com. And it's gonna be an A record. And I'm gonna put in that IP address. Okay, that's all you have to do. You also might wanna decrease the time to live 
just for our convenience. All uh, that's basically like how quickly it updates. Okay. Um, and uh, since I activated IPv6, I will go ahead and get my IPv6 address, which is right here. So, and you can put that in as well. It is not an A record, it is an AAAA record. Uh, but you, so this allows people to access your website with IPv4 or IPv6. If you don't know the difference, just do them both, it's fine. Um, so once you have those, uh, you also might want to go to subdomains or put in a C name or alias record. Um, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to say redirect www.uniboomer.com to uh, uniboomer.com. And in Epic, you have to put a trailing period here. Not all sites require that, but if you're putting them in manually on a DNS server, you'd have to you know, write all this out. But anyway, so I'm going to save all these changes. Okay. That's going to take a little bit of time to update. Um, DNS records sometimes propagate slowly on the internet. I mean, we decreased our time to live by a good bit. But anyway, here is our um, IP address. So I should be able to go, let's say ping uniboomer.com. And I should, yeah, okay. You'll see here, there's that IP address starts with 45 and you'll see it's actually going to this vulture uh, server right here. In fact, we might, we might be able to put in uniboomer.com. Okay, yeah, perfect. Uh, well, perfect, not perfect. There's nothing set up here, but okay. Well, at least it's, uh, let's see. All right, whatever, it doesn't matter now. We haven't even set up the web server. We'll, we'll figure it out. We don't expect it to have anything yet. Uh, okay, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna log into our website. Okay, now I'm gonna do an absurd flex right here. Here's what I'm gonna do. Um, so the settings here, you'll see that we have a root user and we also have a password. Now it could be a good boy and I'm just gonna copy my password to my clipboard. But you know what, I, I'm gonna flex, I'm gonna show you my password. That is my pa That is the root password to this device. You could log in with that password right now. Um, but I am going to go ahead, here's how we're gonna log in. SSH, log in as the root user. We are gonna log into that server at uniboomer.com. Okay, first thing it's gonna do is it's gonna bring up this thing. Oh, you're connecting to a new server. Uh, do you wanna continue with this new fingerprint I'm getting? Just say, type in yes. Um, so now it's gonna ask you for that password. I copied it in my clipboard, so I'm gonna paste that in. And now we are actually in our server, okay? Um, and, uh, oh, please don't steal my password. Uh, let's actually talk about the password first, okay? Um, so here's what we're gonna do. Now, if you just made a key pair on your main computer, I'm gonna pull up a terminal in my main computer. Here's what you can now do. You can say SSH copy ID and then run this, okay? You're giving it an input file and that's gonna be an SSH I, what is it? ID RSA pub, okay? You're saying, okay, copy the idea, the ID that I just got from my SSH from doing that SSH gen key command. Copy it to root at uniboomer.com, okay? Run that command. Uh, why is that not working, uniboomer.com? Uh, it might just be because uh, the DNS records have not updated. I might have to wait for just a second. Okay, yeah, it just took a second. It had to, or it might have been my local internet that wasn't working. So anyway, it's gonna give you, it's gonna ask for your password for your server. I am gonna paste that in run it, and it's gonna say, now try logging into the machine with SSH root at uniboomer.com. Let's actually try that out. So what that will do is now our server knows what computer we use, okay? So again, back you back your key up, because now this key is your thing for getting into the server. You don't need a password, you can just use it to get in. Now, the real reason you use this, you might say, okay, great, now I don't have to put in a password, but the real reason you wanna use this is for this. Go into Etsy SSH SSH underscore config. We're gonna go down to password authentication and we're gonna say no. We're gonna say use Pam. Actually, let's see if it's already written in the file. No, it isn't. Use Pam, say no. I think that's the most important one. And challenge challenge response authentication. We're gonna say no, use Pam is not colored, but that, that should be the right one. So if we now go back here, system, CTL, restart, or we'll, we'll just reload SSHD. I don't know, maybe you should restart it. Maybe I'll restart it just for fun. Um, but that should make it so that it's impossible now to log into the server with 
your password. You now have to have that SSH key. Now that even though I just showed you my password a second ago, you should not be able to log into this machine. All right, sounds good. All right, so in the meantime, while, um, while I had turned off the video waiting, I had actually run two commands, or actually three commands, uh, uh, apt update on my server uh, to update all the packages, so they should all be updated and upgrade to, you know, upgrade whichever ones I needed to. So it's a good habit to just go ahead and uh, run those. Uh, additionally, I installed three programs, apt install. This is the important, well, they're all important ones. Uh, this one is this thing, N-G-I-N-X, it's pronounced Nginx. That is your web server. Install also CertBot. This gives you HTTPS on your website, so it is nice and secure. Even if you're not using password forms, you're gonna want HTTPS, especially because search engi engines just prefer it nowadays. Uh, and you'll also wanna install Cert, Python CertBot Nginx, okay? So as I said, I already installed all these, so now they're here. Let's, okay, so let's figure out, let's, what do we do now? Okay, so Nginx's configuration files are gonna be an Nginx, uh, Etsy dot, uh, slash Nginx. And the real things we wanna look at right now is the stuff in sites available. Okay, so these are, okay, hold on. I cannot stand not using Vi mode in the shell. It's just so hard, I don't know how people do it. Um, actually, I wanna, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go into my Nginx folder, okay? And there is a default profile here. Profile here. I'm gonna copy that to another file in the same folder that is, uh, we'll just call it cabin. That's gonna be the name of your web profile for that site. And I'm gonna edit that with uh, vim here. Uh, use whatever text editor you want. Look at all these comments. Uh, let's get rid of these comments. Let's see, uh, we'll say global uh, anything that has uh, white space and then a uh, pound sign, delete that. Okay, all right, so. Um, in here, here's what we're gonna want. We're gonna want it to listen on port eight, get rid of the default server stuff, and we're gonna wanna give it a file directory to look at when you're looking for this, uh, when you're looking for uniboomer.com. So let's say, um, uh, we'll just call it cabin. That's gonna, be, that's gonna be the location. The index is gonna be your index file. It's gonna be that file, like if you just land on, you type in uniboomer.com, the convention is to go to index.html. Okay, so we're just gonna keep it there. And server name, we're gonna put uniboomer.com and www.uniboomer.com. Okay, um, and that should be about it. So once you've edited that in Nginx, you are going to want to link, you're gonna to wanna to go type in, a, make a symbolic link from that file that we just made and put that into sites enabled, okay? Now if you run that, that should work. And then systemctl reload engine, oh wait, 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 one more thing I wanna do. I wanna go ahead, um, well I guess we could go ahead and enable nginx, but let's make a directory uh, that is var www.cabin. That is, that's the place that we're gonna put our website and let's, let's go ahead and go to that directory and let's make a little page here. Okay, so we'll, again, our index file is gonna be called index.html. So I'm just gonna put some stuff in here. Uh, the Una, Una Boomers cabin, okay. Um, just random HTML, so here, here is a sentence. Okay, can be whatever. Uh, and, all right, so now that we have that, we have a little, we have like a file in our actual website. Now we can do this, we can do systemctl reload nginx. Okay, um, now one last thing uh, you wanna do, you wanna actually install CertBot. Um, or you have CertBot installed, but you wanna install it for your domain. So we're gonna run CertBot nginx. And this is gonna give you HTTPS for your website. Now it's gonna ask for an email address if it's the first time you've run it. I'm just gonna give them mine. Um, agree to the terms. Uh, they're not bad, it's just free software and stuff, uh, but they do ask if you wanna share your email. I will say no. Um, and then it asks what names do you wanna activate HTTPS for? Um, I'm gonna say one and two. And it's gonna take just a second, should take less than a minute. In fact, I won't even cut the video. I don't think it'll take long. So that will, okay, great. And it'll ask, do you wanna redirect? Say yes, say two for yes, okay. That will just automatically redirect HTTP to HTTPS. 
Now that that is done, the moment of truth. Let's go over here. Uh, oh, my face isn't here for the React. Uh, let's see, so we'll go uniboomer.com. And yep, look at that. There's a website, you know, <laughs> that's, all of this is the setup. You, you now have a website. You now have, it's at a domain name. Uh, you should be able to access it with IPv4 version four or version six. If you don't know what that means, that's great. It is also HTTPS secured, um, which is very, very nice. You have secured connections. So now you just gotta go here, write whatever you want, do whatever you want, start, I don't know, figuring out how to make the website, is, that's, that's part of the fun side. But uh, I'll do some videos on that later. Okay, so one more important note. So we do have HTTPS, um, but HTTP, your certificate will um, expire every couple of months or whatever, or maybe like a year or whatever. Uh, so it is always good practice to have your server automatically update, automatically rerun certbot every once in a while. So to be clear, whenever you run certbot renew, it'll check, okay, let's check and see if we have some certificates that need updating, okay? Uh, or at least the, I think that's a command. Let me see what it is on my other uh, uh, server, because I always forget um, exactly what it is. Um, actually, uh, cron tab E, okay, yeah. So I have, um, basically what I have here is, um, just do this, okay. Run cron tab with the E option, and then I'm gonna put in this command here. So 111 dot dot cert bot renew. Cert bot renew, okay. Now what that is for, is it will every month, at the beginning of every month, that's what this syntax says, like, uh, but at the beginning of every month, certbot will run to make sure that it needs, if it needs to update anything. So that will uh, take care of, you know, updating HTTPS. HTTPS. Okay, so, uh, so here's our website, great. Um, now it sounds like, oh, that was a lot of work, but he, it, adding new stuff is actually pretty easy now that you've run through this process before. If you wanna add other websites, you just you know get your IP addresses or whatever, put them into A records. Uh, if you wanna have new subdomains, you can put them in there. Um, now you can have, you can host multiple websites on one server, uh, on one, you know, one IP address or whatever. Um, that's what I have. I have a couple different domains directing, you know, their, their, um, a records all direct to the same server. And what you can do at any time is let's go to the Nginx configuration. Okay. Uh, sites available, um, cabin. Okay. Notice in this file here. Um, well, notice also that there's this extra stuff in that, cert, that CertBot added in. Um, but all you really have to do is once you've directed your website or your, um, you know, that uh, domain name to look to your server, you just have to tell Nginx, all right, here, um, you, you need to make a profile that has the server names for whatever your other websites are or subdomains or stuff like that. And you can add those in, just restart, reload Nginx with systemctl, reload Nginx and it will, you'll have new websites and stuff like that. All right, so that's about it. So have fun playing around with your website. We haven't, I, I, maybe I should do a basic HTML tutorial because you know this is not suitable, this is not web safe or whatever. Well, it's, it's safe, but you'll look like a total boomer having a website that doesn't even have a title, but. Okay, so anyway, that's about it. Start playing around and I'll see you guys next time.